I invite you to be seated. Welcome to those who are joining us online this morning. It's also great to be in the sanctuary. Uh, the word sanctuary actually means set apart. A place that is set apart for a purpose. To hear the truth of God's love, God's word, and God's forgiveness. We've been on a journey through a very familiar prayer to most people. The Lord's Prayer. It was taught at least three, if not four, different times by Jesus during his earthly ministry. There are variants in the prayer in that Jesus would exchange a word given the situation that he was in. And we're going to come across that today. The Lord's Prayer stacks upon itself. Our Father in heaven, foundation, God is a good Father who knows us and loves us. Holy is your name. Your name set apart. Sanctus, when it's translated into the Latin, like sanctuary. Your name is set apart. What a beautiful name it is. That's what we just sang. And it is a beautiful name. It is a name at which every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess one day. What a beautiful name. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom is coming and your will is being done. God's kingdom, like a scroll, it's rushing towards us and we're rushing towards it. And God's will is very simply this, the desire of God's heart. The will of God is that you would experience freedom today as well as for eternity. God's will is that forgiveness would permeate the way that you think, the way that you feel, and the way that you live. If God's kingdom is coming and God's will is being done, what else do we need? Oh, oh yeah daily bread, that we would find satisfaction and delight today. Fresh bread is the way it's translated. That we would greet afresh each day every gift that God has given to us. And that God is generous with his gifts even if we are not thankful or even if we are unaware. For example, not many of us, probably on our gratitude list today, started with, God, thank you for oxygen. And yet God has provided oxygen in abundance. Give us this day what we need. Help us to remain present right here and right now. And if we have what we need for every day, well, what else do we need? Oh, forgiveness. Teach us, Lord, to be forgiving because we are forgiven. Some people call this the wait-a-minute vine. Do you know what a wait-a-minute vine is? When you're hiking through the forest or you're, you're, you're going through the woods and one of those vines catches you with a thorn and it says, hey, wait a minute. A wait-a-minute vine is one of those things that causes the stop and go, what did I just say? God, I want you to forgive me as much as I'm willing to forgive other people. Wait a minute. That's not what I want. Instead, I want you to teach me to be generous with grace to the people who not necessarily deserve it, but to the people who desperately need it. And that's for me, as you have given. So teach me how to give that to others. And as we focus upon the next part of the Lord's Prayer today, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's the next portion. And then next week, we're going to have the opportunity to focus upon the concept of for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Today we're going to wrap it around those two thoughts of, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let's go there now. 
and lead us not in temptation. When Jesus said, lead us not, he used a very particular phrase which referred to somebody just meandering or wandering through life. They're just simply going wherever their motives may take them. Left to our own devices, our feet shall find us in places we probably should not go. Left to our own sinful nature, left to our own ways, we will by nature go to that which is comfortable, not necessarily comforting, and we will go to places which will take our eyes off of Jesus and put our eyes on ourselves. When Jesus used this phrase for a wandering people, a meandering people, peri, around about walking people, he is saying, keep our feet from places they should not be. You've been there. You've been there more than once. You've been there a lot more than once. You return to a behavior that you think is comforting, but it is destructive. There is a slogan in Alcoholics Anonymous that goes like this. If you, go to, if you hang around a barber shop long enough, you're going to get a haircut. I am living proof that that is the case. We, by our nature, love repetition. We love pattern. It's comforting to us. And our repetition and our pander and, and our patterns, even if they are meandering, wondering patterns, are wondering, wordplay alert, keeps us from wonder. The wonder of what God has in store for us, our God whose ways are higher than our ways, whose thoughts are higher than our thoughts, that God wants more than just meaningless repetition with our life. Our lives are a liturgy. They have such repetition to them. And God is inviting us to see life in terms of freedom and hope and grace and to gather around places of life rather than that hunker down, keep everything under my control. Keep us from places we should not be. Keep us from patterns of behavior that promise life but rob us of peace. Keep us from the same old, same old sin that we just go back to because we're used to it. And instead, living in the invitation of the power of God's Holy Spirit that says, I want you to have life and freedom from those things. Lead us not into temptation. When Jesus used the word temptation, he used it in one time in the Lord's Prayer in terms of that which is going to tempt us like Adam and Eve tempted by the lie of the evil one to try to secure power apart from God. The other time it's used is for trial. But deliver us from the trials that we're going through. And that's why that next part of the prayer goes to the conjunction, junction, what's your function? The, the but, deliver us from evil. But we know this about temptation that free cheese is always available in mousetraps. We can always go there to get it. Jesus understood temptation. He endured temptation, Scripture tells us in Hebrews, in every way, just as we have. Before he started out on his earthly ministry, Jesus encountered three different temptations by the evil one, by the devil in the wilderness. 
And these three temptations are the same temptations that we encounter today. Temptation one, turn these stones into bread. In the Middle East, the way that bread is made, um, if you were to take, for example, pita bread, pita bread, and you were to toss a piece on the ground, you couldn't tell the difference between pita bread and a regular rock. So the devil comes and says, so turn these stones into bread. In other words, will I have enough? He was saying to Jesus, is your father really going to provide for you what you need? Are you ever tempted by that? Wondering the one who has given you daily bread and what you need for this life all the way up to this point, is he really going to provide? Will I have enough? That's a temptation. Temptation number two, when Jesus is taken by the evil one to the top of the temple and he shows the the power of the religious people of the day, Jesus, can you keep this under control? If you trust me, you'll have control. Don't put your trust in God. Put your trust in me, the evil one says. Or put your trust in you. Is control an issue for you? If I can control life, I can control what's going on around me, then I will find comfort. It's a lie of the evil one. Temptation number three. He takes him up to a high mountain and says, if you will but kneel before me, all of this I will give to you. You will have it all. And in the background of that third temptation is the temptation we have of acceptance. Will I be acceptable. It is understood that children from the time they were born are wondering three questions. Am I lovable? Is love available? And are the people around me capable of loving me? In our Savior Jesus, the answer is yes, yes, and yes. And what we discover, contrary to the way that athletics is often coached today, where everyone gets a medal or a trophy or a ribbon, the truth is none of us are exceptional. So when you go home and talk to your roommate or you talk to someone and say, what they talk about at church? Oh, we're not exceptional. When it comes to handling temptation, we are not ex- uh, exceptional. When we try to go it alone and do it our way, we are not exceptional. When we try to do it our way, we are not exceptional. It doesn't matter whether the two year old touches the hot stove the seven-year-old touches the hot stove, or the parent touches the hot stove, they all get burned. When we play with that which we know is destructive to us, we will get burned. We are not exceptional. And lead us not into temptation Do you see how they're connected? But deliver us from the evil one. One of the times that Jesus teaches the Lord's Prayer to his disciples, he says, deliver us from the evil one. And in the other times, in the audience to which he's speaking, it's deliver us from evil. 
And there's another way that Jesus translates this too. And if you look at the context of which he's speaking, it makes great sense. Now, the word for evil is in Hebrew, it's avon. And in Greek, there's two very particular words for evil. Okay, the first word that's used, that Jesus uses, is kaka. It was not but three weeks ago that I was doing a baptism, and the young child was being held by the parents, and the young child decided to gain complete center attention when the dad holding the child says, I have kaka all over me. Do you know what kaka is? I'm on live stream and I'd like to continue as your pastor, but there's a German term for it called scheist. I think you can get my drift there. But what is kaka? Kaka is something that has had all of its value and its worth taken out of it. Deliver us from those things that will rob us of our value and our worth. Save us from our kaka, God. For what the kaka that we get ourselves into. And then in one particular location, Jesus uses the word porna or porneru, and we get the word porn, as in pornography. And the term for porn means to rob someone of dignity and to rob someone of worth. Pornography, porn on paper. That we are robbing someone of their dignity and their worth in order that we're able to gain a sense of power and control and pleasure over someone else. The, the danger of pornography is that it is an addictive thing in which our brain says it's okay. While God is saying, no, I have so much more that I want for you. God, deliver us from our caca. And right now you're probably thinking about the caca you've got yourself into. And you may be thinking about the devaluation of choices that you have made all along. And that's why Jesus says, but deliver us from evil, from doing evil to ourselves, from the evil that is done to us, and deliver us from evil surrounding us. Jesus understands evil. Jesus understands what it means to be taken advantage of, to be, bit, uh, to be uh, bruised, hurt, beaten, and scourged. He faced evil for him and for you fully and completely on a cross. He understands that evil is kaka and porneru, and through his death, he restores nutritional value and worth to our spirit, and through his resurrection, he restores our value, our worth, and our dignity. That we who have taken steps into temptation and have brought evil upon ourselves or have had evil foisted upon us, he says, I am the one who deliver you. Not just one day, as we sang in that beautiful song, and when Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation. We don't have to wait for that day. Right here, right now, God gives you the power over evil. The Lord is with you. In that one little place in the New Testament where it says the evil one, There's basically two extremes in the way that we talk about the devil. We talk about the devil like a character with horns and a red tail and so forth, more of a mythical creature. 
And then there are others who see the devil behind absolutely every bad thing that happens. We begin every worship service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is an unholy trinity as well. The devil, the world, and our own sinful nature. The unholy trinity, if you will. And it really doesn't matter if it's one or the other or the other. They all seek to do the very same thing. And what is that? The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and you may have it abundantly. Jesus says, I am God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are working in concert unity to deliver you from temptation and to deliver you from evil. It's not an if thing. It's a right here, right now thing. God's grace is yours. We say that all the time. But did you know that God's power is also yours? So it's not, you're going to overcome the devil, the world, and their sin for nature by you. God's the one who's doing that. Oftentimes our best prayer is, God, you take this because I can't. You've got this and you've got me. So when Jesus finishes that perfect prayer, for everything that God desires for you in your life right here today is contained in the Lord's Prayer. In this prayer, he finishes with the words, lead us not into temptation, which means God, stop our wandering away from your grace and your forgiveness. And instead, simply let us receive it and celebrate it and live it. We're going to stop our wandering away from trying to live our life by our power, but by yours. And keep your promise, ultimately, to deliver us from both evil and the evil one. Next week, we're going to focus on these words right here. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. It's not Michael's kingdom. It's not Michael's power. And it's not Michael's glory. It's not mine. It's God's. So when we try to deal with temptation by, my, by our power, failure. Repetitive failure. But by God's power, victory. When I pray the Lord's Prayer, I'll often do this. Because everything that God wants for me is contain and for you is contained in that prayer. But I remember it's not going to come by me. It's going to come by thee. And so I just point up to remind myself, for thine is a kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Would you do that with me right now? Just simply say the words with me. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray.